Come on now. Oh, there we go. Come on, people. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to my cooking experience, folks. Before we get started, I'd like to give a big shout out. I got some special guests in the audience. Some of my sponsors, Mr. Matt Willingham, Willingham Seafood. And I that's my man, Matt. You know, Matt and I keep it real here on the Boggy Bayou, right, Matt? We know how to do it, baby. From the gulf to your table, that's our motto. Um, also, we have Mr. Dave Swanick in the house. What's up, Big Dave? Oh, baby. That's my man right there, man. You need something to take care of, that's the man right there. He gets it done, boy. Get it done. And also, folks, without further ado, I'd like to welcome y'all to my, my favorite best friend over here, Mr. Ron Adams, is in the house. We have a special guest. And you know, if we're lucky here at the end of the, the, end of the night, we might, get, we might twist his arm a little bit and he might serenade you ladies a little bit. I hope y'all ready. All right, guys, so let's get this party started. We're going to get moving. I have a wonderful menu for you guys tonight. Um, and I'm doing a little something different tonight. I'm going to start off with a soup, okay? Um, this is a wonderful soup. It's actually a crawfish and corn chowder, okay? Um, and the only thing that makes it a chowder is, unlike being a crawfish and corn bisque, which is kind of Louisiana, is I add potato in it. And I like the chowder. I like the potato in that cream soup. So basically, guys, we're going to kick on the grill here, start cooking it up. We got our flame. There she is. Oh, yeah, baby. Got to have the flame, baby. <laughs> there we go. All right, guys, so to start off this soup, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just basically take some bacon, okay, some fresh bacon, and we're going to crisp this bacon up really quickly. And... Um, you know, the bacon grease and the bacon fat in there is what really is really nice. Then we're going to add a little bit of some celery in there. We're going to saute some celery in here with the uh, bacon, which is a lot of fun. Gives it a good flavor. You know, that's what it is. You know, because funny thing, guys, a lot, a lot about cooking is not always the ingredients, you know, or the recipe. A lot of things in cooking, it's the process of how you do things that make it good. You know what I mean? So you got to do it in different levels, different flavors. So we're going to get this bacon saute in and cooking up. Just takes a few seconds there. We're also going to add some fresh onion. Everybody knows about the onion? Onion. Yeah, you're right. Me and Matt Wilhelm have been through this before. And onion is an onion is an onion with a little bit of Cajun on it. All right? <laughs> okay, guys. Now I'm going to add a little bit of pureed shrimp, believe it or not. That's my little trick when I'm sauteing this. I add a little puree shrimp in there. Add the puree shrimp. Fantastic. Add a little garlic butter in there to kind of get it going. And now you can see it smell. Boy, you can smell it cooking, huh? Come on now. Oh, yeah. Definitely. But this is just a little bit of a process right here. We got to cook this down. And then basically what we're going to do is we're going to make a little bit of a roux, okay, for this soup right here. And over here I have my stock pot going already, and I've already started reducing down some half and half uh, heavy cream with some milk. So I've got that sautéed and reducing down right now, and it's all going to come together, and we're going to slowly simmer this soup for the rest of the evening, okay? So we're going to sauté that all. Now we got it going, Matt. takes a minute to get that bacon right where I want it, you know what I'm saying? Ha <laughs> ha! Ah, hee. Boy, what a beautiful day, huh, guys? How you like the beautiful new docks here at the dock side? What a sunset. Man, tonight we're going to have a beautiful sunset. I can't wait. Just gorgeous. The beaches, man. Fourth of July is coming up. Everybody's ready for the Fourth of July, right? Oh, yeah. We're going to have a big party here. That's for sure. That's guaranteed. All right, guys. We got that working down right there. We got that working down. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is once we get this nice and hot, we've got to reduce that a little bit. So while that's reducing a little bit, I'm going to jump over to my second course because I'm going to do these both for the sake of television. We're going to speed it up a little bit. Let that little simmer down a little bit because we want to get that grease going in here, okay? So now we're going to move over to my appetizer course. And this is going to be a fun course, guys, because this is something you can do at home. It's a great appetizer for parties when you're out using your outdoor grill at home. I call it sweet andouille shrimp. Okay, so a lot of people, you've all done bacon wrapped shrimp before at home, right? Who hasn't done bacon wrapped shrimp? What we do a little different here at the dock side is we actually take andouille sausage and we take shrimp and then we take them like so and we skewer them together, you see guys? So we do a nice skewer 
a little appetizer size of shrimp wrapped around andouille, okay? Uh, but what's going to really make it fun is I make my own little sauce, and we use it here at the restaurant. It's called sweet chili glaze. And basically, I'll show you the components. We put some fresh honey in right here, guys. Got to have a little sweetness in there. Oh, yeah. Got to make it sweet, baby. Ah, yeah. Then we're going to do a little red pepper right here. You know, and, that, and that you can use that to order, you know. I'm going to put a little bit in there. I don't want it to be too hot. Uh, we're going to use some fresh, fresh granulated sugar because it's got to be a little even more sweet than that. Then I add a little bit of water, believe it or not. Kind of thin it out just a little. And then we add some fresh garlic on top of that. Okay? All right, guys, here we go. We're going to whip this up really quickly, real quick. And you see how nice that makes a nice little sauce right there? Makes a nice little, it's really like a glaze is what I call it. Okay, we're going to do this like so and whip it up. And it's got all the little sweet, it's sweet and spicy, which is really, really fun. We got this mixed up. Now we're going to take our shrimp. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to take your skewered shrimp. You're going to roll it around in your glaze like so. You get the red pepper and the glaze on there. And then it's going to go right on the grill. Oh, yeah. Let's do a few of them, guys, while we're doing it. A little sweet chili red pepper, a little glaze. See how nice it is? What a nice bite-sized appetizer, right, guys? Wouldn't this be nice for a party? Everybody's gonna get, everybody's gonna get a few of those here in a minute. Oh, yes, absolutely. And everybody's gonna get to taste this, and it just smells so great when it's cooking, guys. It's just such a nice, fresh, outdoor grilled dish. Something different, too. You know, like I said, everybody does the bacon wrap shrimp. I like it. Slow and easy, baby. So now I got a few of these on here, guys. We're going to close this lid. Look how nice that looks. We're going to let these sit here for you for a second. Now we're going to jump over and finish our roof for our soup right here. And, uh, you know, this soup right here, it looks like it's a lot going on, but I tell you, when you get done with it, it's so worth it, and I really wanted to show it to you. It's one of my best-selling soups besides my seafood gumbo. All right, guys, so now we got those going right there. We're going to leave it on a nice low. Leave it on low. Now I'm getting where I want to be right here. Move right over to our soup. Okay, guys, we're sauteing this down right here. And if you can see what I got going on now, now we're getting that going right there, guys. You know, we're only one item away from the Holy Trinity right here. Um, did anybody tell me what the Holy Trinity is in Louisiana cooking? Celery, bell pepper, and onion. That's correct. So right now we got some celery and onion in here. We don't have a little bell pepper in this soup. Okay. So now we're at that point right now, okay guys? Now I'm gonna add a little butter. We're gonna go in with some butter. Oh yeah, gotta have some butter. Now we're gonna melt that butter down in here. Oh yeah, baby. There we go. And now folks, we're gonna move to the roof stage. Moving to the roof stage. And you see basically guys, you wanna just get these vegetables to where they start to just get soft and um, I'm going to teach you a little tip here that's really interesting about when you make a roux. Now we got our white flour, okay? Everybody knows white flour makes a roux. We use butter here. So we're going to add our flour in, folks, like so. And we're going to blend this. Get this all mixed in real nicely. And basically what's going to happen, guys, is as the vegetables cook, okay, the vegetables will release their natural juices, and when they do, the sugar in their natural juices that release into that makes the root turn brown, turn golden brown. So that's when you know when you got it, baby, when that stuff starts to just release, and you get that browning effect that we're looking for, and this is going to be the base for our soup right here. Okay? Fantastic. All right, we're cooking with Crisco. Cooking with Crisco, guys. Leave that sit just for another minute or so. Let that brown a little bit. Let's check on our shrimp while we're doing that, guys. What do you say? Oh, looking good, guys. We're going to flip these one time. There we go. You know, only a professor can do that with your bad hands. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> they call that kitchen hands, folks. Years of training, years of training. All right, guys, so now that we're getting this roux right where we want, you know, you can brown this down a little bit, and it's going to start to turn a nice golden brown once I get that to where I want it which is looking good right now. Okay, guys, now we're going to take this, transfer this over into our soup. That's already reducing down nice and hot. That's going to help to thicken it up right there, guys. Perfect. 
Now we're going to go with the rest of our items. Okay, we're going to add in some cream corn. A little cream corn for our soup right here. Wonderful. Then we're going to do a little t potato, which the potato, of course, is going to be what makes it a nice chowder. We got our crawfish tails. Louisiana, wonderful crawfish tails, baby. Oh, yeah, baby. Aye. Yeah, baby. You know that. And they got a nice little cage of spice to it. I like to put a couple of bay leaves in this soup also. Um, you guys are going to get to try this. You're going to love it. I have some fresh ground thyme right here. We're going to do a little bit of a nice little portion of thyme. We're going to hear what a little bit it is. A little bit of that. How am I doing over there? We on the hand. We doing good? Oh, yeah, man. Hey, this ain't no easy dish right here now, guys. This is the real deal right here. All right, there we go. A little thyme in there. We're going to do a little. We're gonna, oh, it doesn't. We're going to do a nice garlic on here. A little bit of garlic. You got to have a little garlic in there. All right, then we got a little Creole seasoning, folks. This is a wonderful Creole seasoning. You know, you can use whatever kind you like. Nice right there. A little bit of that. All right, then you got, always got to have a little cayenne pepper. Right, guys? A little cayenne pepper. This is one, you know, like I said, you do that to taste. I like a little bit of this, little bit of that right there with the cayenne. Moving right along. Okay, guys. Then finally, I have some shredded carrot. We're going to add some carrot to that, folks. And then I have the last but not least is some wonderful onion shallot. A little green onion, chopped up shallot. We're going to throw some of that in there. And I'm going to save a little bit of this when we garnish the tops for y'all. Um, and basically, we're going to stir this up really nicely. Oh, baby. Ooh-wee, boy. You can see that. You see that, folks? Oh, man. I love the way all the flavors and all the spices are coming together now. We're going to leave this on a low simmer, folks. And we're going to leave this simmering for you right now. Um, let's check out our shrimp. Oh, my boy. Look at that, Willingham. And we have our beautiful shrimp. We have these beautiful shrimp provided by Willingham, Willingham Seafood. Absolutely. Wouldn't have it any other way. Keeping it real. All right, guys, I'm going to plate this up for you and show you what it looks like. Okay, so here's your first course, guys, which is our sweet andouille shrimp. And just imagine, you know, you had a nice little barbecue at a party. Wouldn't that be lovely to serve that to your guests right there? Isn't that nice? All right, folks. Well, I want everybody to hang in. Stay, stay tuned at home, folks. We'll be right back. I'm going to serve these wonderful first two courses to my wonderful guests. i see you in a minute, baby. Aye. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Chef Ernie. Whoa. Come on now. What's up, folks? Oh, yeah, baby. Welcome back. Welcome back, folks. Thank y'all for coming back. Staying tuned in. Uh, great to be here on the Boggy Bayou. Um, now moving forward, guys, we're going to be moving to our, to our main course tonight, which is going to be my special jambalaya pasta. And, folks, I tell you, um, on my menu, uh, my number one, one of my number one selling items is my New Orleans chicken andouille sausage jambalaya, and it's Momo Ida's recipe. And Momo Ida is my mother, God rest her soul. Uh, she passed away last year, but her, her, her food and her memory lives on. And um, so tonight I'm going to honor her and put this dish together. And this is something that I just recently put together. I took all the flavors of what we do in the regular jambalaya and have converted it into a pasta form. And what I love about this, guys, this is a great dish that you can do at home. Uh, we do it to order here in the restaurant. Um, or you can do it for a large group if you're having a party. It's a great party item because it's like a meal in itself, you know. It's got the chicken. It's got the andouille sausage. It's got the bell pepper. It's got the onion. It's got tomato. So it's a meal all in itself, and you're going to love it. So let's get this party started. We're going to crank up our little grill right here for us real quick. Get this bad boy rolling. All right, guys. Take a little bit of our garlic butter. Squeeze that in there. We're going to saute a little chicken. So you want to start off by sauteing your chicken, guys. Um, you want to cook that chicken down. Um, I like to get it cooked down a little bit before we get started with anything else. Um, and that's going to give it all the flavor right in here. Then we're going to have some, add some wonderful andouille sausage. Come on now. You got to love andouille. You know, I tell you, you got to love it. It's a very meaty Louisiana sausage that we use. Um, and it's got so much flavor in it. You'll find when I'm cooking with this andouille sausage or with andouille sausage in general, I kind of hold back on my seasoning because sometimes it'll get away from you when that sausage kicks in. Now we're going to add in some of our vegetables. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of onion. 
some onion. Yeah, you gotta love the onion. We're gonna do a little bit of bell pepper, some diced green bell pepper. Somebody likes bell peppers out there. Was that you, Matt Willingham? Oh, that was Mr. Swanick. He liked them bell peppers over there, baby. That's my boy. Fantastic. Now we're gonna saute this down right here, guys, a little bit. Get it cooking down. Get all these flavors to cook through. You see that, folks? We're just gonna reduce this down, cook it down until all the flavors come together. Come together right now for Chef Ernie D. Hey, hey you like that? All right, <laughs> I did that for Rick. He loves the Beatles over there. He's a Beatles nut. All right, good. I add a little bit of onion shallot there. And basically, we're just sauteing this down, right, like this. So you're adding everything that goes into the jambalaya into, into a um, little saute right there. Now, here's something that's probably a little bit something you wouldn't have known that would be in here. Um, we're going to add a little bit of beef stock to the saute. Okay? That's a little trick. Aye! Aye! Oh, you got to love when y'all do that. That's so cool. <laughs> but anyway, so that gives it, I like that because it gives it a little bit of the beefy flavor, but it also gives it a little bit of saltiness to it too, a little savory saltiness, okay? That's a little bit of a trick my mother used to add to hers, so we got to put it in this one. All right, guys, now we're going to add us a little bit of diced tomato to give us that little tomato side to it. We're going to keep sauteing this down right here. Boy, doesn't that look wonderful? Oh, my goodness. All those flavors, I mean, you can just smell it. Can anybody smell it? I can smell it from right here. You know, because 90% of what you taste is what you smell, folks. The aroma here is just absolutely spectacular. Everything is just coming together really nicely for me right now. We'll keep that going. Excellent, excellent. We're going to add a little bit of rosemary. We're going to add a little bit of some Cajun Creole seasoning. You know, and I like to use Tony Sasseries. That's one of my favorite. Um, some people think it's a little salty, but I like it. Um, we're going to put a little bit of some wonderful garlic, some granulated garlic. Got to have some garlic in there. All the flavors for the jambalaya. Fantastic. All right. Then we're going to do a little bit of cracked salt and pepper. As so. Fantastic. Hey, check it out behind me, guys. Look at that beautiful sunset, right? Huh? Man, oh, man. Come on. Only one place can you get that, right here on the Boggy Bayou at Dockside Cafe here in Niceville. I think it sets up more beautiful every time. All right, guys, we're almost to that point. See now, this is starting to reduce down really nicely. Okay, we got all the peppers, all the onions, all the tomatoes, all the garlic. Boy, it just smells. There's so much going on in here. So much going on there. You see, now that we got it to this point, guys, now what we're going to do is we're going to add some heavy whipping cream. Whipping cream in here. Okay. Now we're just going to reduce this down and bring it together. It's all going to come together. Okay, guys, so basically that's where we are. We have our jambalaya pasta base pretty much done for you. Now we're going to reduce that down. We're going to continue to reduce that down. It's going to get a little bit thick. It's going to get nice. I'm going to take it here, and I'm just going to combine it over the top of this wonderful pasta. Come on, baby. You got to work it. How we doing over there, Rick? We doing good, baby? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. Willingham, how we doing, sir? You know, hey, this is crazy, man. I got a dish without no seafood in it. What's going on, man? Come on, man. Don't hate me over there. Don't hate me. It's my mama's dish. <laughs> All right, guys, so we're going to set up this pasta for you right now. Oh, baby. Here we go. Come on now. Come on, baby. You see all the flavor there, guys? Isn't that beautiful? Now we're going to give it a little sauce on the top. Beautiful, beautiful. Now we're going to finish it off, guys, with a wonderful little Parmesan cream, Parmesan cheese. Got a little cheese. And look, that's how we do it on the Boggy Bayou. That's how we do it. That's how we do it, a little jambalaya pasta. All right, folks, our main course is ready. We're going to be serving it to my guests right here. I want y'all to sit back, relax. Don't go nowhere. I'll be right back. Aye. Yeah, you're right. Thanks, guys. What's up with that? What up? Aye. There we go. Boy, what a great night, huh? We've had a wonderful evening. Some beautiful food with some great friends. Um, guys, we're going to finish this with one of my favorite New Orleans desserts, man. Bananas Fosters. Flaming Bananas Fosters, right? Okay, and this dessert has a lot of history to it. Has anybody ever heard of Brennan's in New Orleans? 
right, of course. Um, they invented the bananas faster as we know it today. In fact, though, I can remember when I was a young kid, my family and my dad would always take us there. Um, they'd do a wonderful Sunday brunch and they'd come around with the cart. And when they pull up with the cart, I knew they were about to get it on, baby. Um, and they had an actually rolling cart where they'd actually roll it right up to your table and flame the bananas fast and serve it to you right at the table. So I'm going to do for them, for you, what they did for me years ago. We're going to do it right now. Okay, this is a fun dessert, guys. Uh, we're going to start off with some butter in a dish and turn on our pan. We've got to get it cooking, baby. We've got to get it cooking. Here we go. All right, we're going to let that butter melt down a little bit. Um, and then we're going to use a little bit of brown sugar with that. Actually, a lot of brown sugar. <laughs> Aye. <laughs> All right, cool. Now we're going to just kind of melt this butter down with the, with the nice brown sugar. Okay. This is going to kind of caramelize a little bit for us. I'm going to add the rest of this butter. You got to do a little more butter, right? Come on, now. Nah. Hey, we're not shy around here at the dark side. How we doing over there, Ron Adams? We doing okay, sir? Oh, Lord, you said oh, Lord over there, boy. What's up with that? Come on now. Boy, I tell you, it's just great, man. Look at the beautiful sunset. Is that just gorgeous? I can't help but turn around, guys. I got to see it. I'm glad you guys all, all you people out there in TV land can see this. I'm glad you're seeing it. All right, cool. Okay, guys, now that we, we got that butter right where I want it and the sugar, next thing I'm going to do is add a little bit of vanilla. A little vanilla, a little pinch of cinnamon. You know, some people do cinnamon. I don't think uh, Brenna's did, but I like a little bit. Then we're going to put the whole pieces of banana in here, folks. Like so. You want to be careful. I like to keep the bananas, you know, cut up, cut, peel a banana, cut it in half, split it in half, and you have uh, four pieces to one banana. Right there, we'll put this on the side. All right, guys. And now, just let that just kind of simmer down. Oh, baby, that's cooking up nice. We got it cooking with Crisco. Just going to take a few seconds. Now we're going to add our creme de banana. This is a nice banana liqueur right here, which gives it a little bit of that wonderful banana flavor. There we go. Oh, baby, you can smell that, huh? Huh, Matt, you can smell that? Oh, man. Each and every one of you is going to get this, and we're going to bring it to you flaming on fire. So, folks, please be careful. You know, don't move your dish around too much, and make sure you blow it out before you eat it, all right? Okay? Come on, I got insurance, but we don't want to use it tonight, okay? All right? All right? All right, guys, so now we got the banana liqueur in there. We got the, we got the nice sugar soothed down with the butter. Oh, man. Boy, look. See how it's all starting to caramelize right now? It's just starting to reduce down. Oh, it's got a wonderful flavor to it, folks. And then here's, here's where the fun starts right now, is we have our wonderful ice cream right here. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to take a little bit like so, a little bit like so. I'm going to take another banana like so, okay? Take some of our sauce on top. Just a little bit of sauce on the top. Okay, guys, kick this flame off right here. Slide this over. And then now we're going to light it up, guys. And then this is the best part. Put a little 151 on top, guys. And we're going to light it on fire. Flaming bananas faster, baby. And look, not only does it smell great, see, like right now what's happening is the, the 151 is burning. And it's actually browning and caramelizing the banana. You see what I'm saying? So that's a big part of it. It goes back into the process of how you cook things. You know, you want to make your sauce. You want to saute it. You want to douse it with the 151, light it on fire, and then let it just brown down. And then you blow it out, and you eat it, baby. Aye! Hey, folks at home, don't you go nowhere. We got the big finish, man. We're going to turn the cameras around. In between the commercial break, we might twist Ron Adams on to come up here and sound the ladies a little bit. I'll see y'all in a minute, baby. Thank y'all for being here. I'll be back in a minute, baby. Aye. Come on now. Come on, we're going to light them up, guys. I'm going in the back. We're going to do it. Come on now. Oh, folks. We're back. We're back. We're back. We're back here on the bayou. Hey, folks, I got Matt Willingham, Willingham Seafood here. We've had a great time tonight. I hope you enjoyed it. Guys, you know, when we hear this kind of music where I come from, we're going to sing live, baby. Come on now. Let's do it. 
All right. Hey, guys, if you want a second line with me, Chef Ernie, my next cooking experience, go to mydocsidecafe.com for tickets. I'll see you there, baby. Hey, there we go. There we go. Come on now. All right, all right. Mr. Smonic, there he is. There's my crew. Hey, Matt, love you, baby. Awesome, awesome. All right. Man, how we doing, sir? Fantastic, man. Thank you, baby.